Hey everyone, so I wanted to make a video today about female hormones and someone had suggested this to me as a video topic and I've touched on it in other videos but the longer I coach and the longer I'm in this community the more I realize how much of a thing this is. So before I get into the details I want to mention that I am coaching again Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday from 12 to 5 p.m. Mountain Time. And I'll put a link to my booking calendar in the description of this video, as well as a link to my website if you want to check that out. So on to the topic of female hormones. So I've really been noticing lately that so much of my clientele are women and middle-aged women, I would say specifically. And I thought, is this a coincidence or is there something to this? I've talked about this in other videos about how PMS is a huge trigger for waves for women and other hormonal vulnerable times in their lives. It could be pregnancy, it could be postpartum, it could be PMS, it could be perimenopause, menopause. I mean, there is definitely an intricate relationship between hormones and neurotransmitters and withdrawal. Absolutely, there is an intricate, detailed relationship intimate relationship between all of these things and I've talked to women who have tried different types of hormone therapy synthetic bioidentical all different kinds of of things and it's wreaked havoc on their withdrawal or their tapering and in in my experience at least doctors tend to general blanket treat women and their hormones very similarly to psychiatry how they blanket treat people with mental disorders or even like 80% of the time they're not even putting people on these drugs responsibly or even for mental health issues. It's for like normal life circumstances that they're inappropriately medicating. But just in general, psychiatry, it's very blanket. Everything's a guessing game. I like to call it vending machine psychiatry because I have so many people saying to me, yeah, I go and visit my psychiatrist and she just says, what do you want to try today? And I respond like, well, why don't you just go up and put, you know, a coin in a machine and turn the thing and put the like letter and number combination like you would picking a bag of chips. Like if we're just going to guess here, why do we even have a doctor? Why? Or I've even said, why not just type in something into chat GPT? It can spit out a response and mail you a prescription. Like that's about the level of care we're getting in psychiatry, if you can even call it care. And I'm starting to notice in my own personal life and in the lives of people that I talk to that hormonal care is not much better. So I've really noticed a lot of similarities with women in this community. And, you know, I, I read some of my YouTube comments and have all these one-on-one -on -one conversations, and this is a real issue. And it's really hard. And the waters get really muddied when especially I think when people get into a protracted state or they're trying to stabilize on meds and they're having all this hormonal confusion, this hormonal interplay. And it's so hard to know what's causing what, because if you deep dive into menopause, perimenopause, hormonal symptoms in females, it can cause a lot of neurological side effects, neurological symptoms that are similar to what people are already experiencing from these drugs. And so it's so hard sometimes, like when I talk to women, I try to get as much detail as possible about their timelines and when things started and when things spiked and when things got more stable. And a lot of times there is, again, that correlation. And so it's really unfair because as we know, like psychiatrists know very little about the drugs that they're doling out so easily. And we as women are not, for the most part, getting proper hormonal care either. And so it's really hard. And maybe you can't even distinguish the two because there is so much overlap that one is always affecting the other. So you can't say, well, this is strictly hormones or this is strictly withdrawal and neurotransmitters because it's probably all just bouncing off of each other. But I wanted to, I guess, validate and and say that I, I feel for all of the women going through this especially if you're in one of those vulnerable times so if you're in pms right now if you are pregnant or you are postpartum or you are perimenopausal because this is like a this is a big issue and people will ask me too 
should I get, should I be doing something about my hormones? Should I be looking into HRT? Should I be looking into some type of birth control? And I just had this conversation recently with someone and, you know, I say too, unless you're, you have a really good starting point, which is hard to get because in my experience, again, when you're asking for hormonal testing or you want to know what your starting point is, doctors just fight you on this and fight you on this. And, you know, they'll say it's not, you can't get an accurate picture of your hormones because they're always fluctuating, which I think is just kind of a cop out answer. And I think it's absolutely within your right to know where you are at, at a baseline. Because when I, I stopped my original SSRI and birth control, my SSRI, I had been on for seven years and only did a four week taper birth control pills I had been on for 17 years and I stopped them both within like a two month period of each other. My period completely stopped. It went away for six months. I had no idea about withdrawal syndrome. I had no idea exactly what happens when you stop birth control. Totally uninformed. Nobody, I mean, I had doctors. I always have doctors because of my diabetes and nobody was giving me information. So finally, I was seven or eight months off my citalopram, about six months off my birth control pills. And I saw a naturopath and she did hormone testing on me or had me get it done somehow. I can't even remember the avenue I went to get the, the blood work. But I remember her reading the results and saying, you have like undetectable progesterone. You have like off the charts out of whack hormones. And it was the first time I had ever heard that. And it was really insightful for me because it, it was starting to make things make sense. I still hadn't figured out the drug stuff yet. I was, I kind of did, but I didn't really understand exactly what was happening. But just hearing that from someone made things start to make sense objectively. I feel like a lot of what got us to this point with these drugs is un, like not being properly informed, not being given informed consent not being told anything, just being guinea pigs, essentially, like, here, try this. And, you know, if, if something goes awry, good luck, because I'm going to gaslight you in the end. At least for me, I don't want to make the same mistake twice, three times now, because I, I did two, I had two separate withdrawals, where I'm just throwing stuff at my body where I don't, and I don't know my starting point. Like, at least give me a, an idea, doc, of where I'm at hormonally, because then it can help me figure out like what's going on and I I have been having really weird symptoms this whole year and I thought it was for sure from when I got COVID in November of 2023 because I started having weird skin problems which I've shared about on this channel an increase in tinnitus I started getting like weird dizzy spells and headaches and but then I became insulin resistant and couldn't lose weight and that was when I was like ah you know maybe this is hormonal but you know, of course, and then my doctor, I talked to her, my internist, I don't have my amazing doctor I had in withdrawal, he moved away. And this one just wanted to put me on synthetic birth control pills. And I'm like, that's not good enough for me at this point. And I think, you know, going through this experience, you become more self aware. And it you come to the point where you want to demand answers. And I think you have every right to do that and should be doing that. So I, again, I tell women, try to get a baseline, at least something that you can see on paper, because you don't want to start throwing stuff at your body like they were doing with you with these psychiatric drugs. You know, they're so quick to say, oh, you have a chemical imbalance. Well, where's the proof of that? Like, where is my starting point? If you're claiming I have an imbalance, then how much of an imbalance? And you should be able to determine that to give me the correct dose instead of just saying, well, everybody starts on 20 milligrams. You know, that that's not, that's not medi practicing medicine. So same thing with hormones. I think especially if you're still in the withdrawal experience and you're kind of trying to figure out what's what, we need something objective. Again, otherwise we're just going down the same path we went down with these psychiatric drugs where it's so unscientific, it's vending machine care. You could just go up and punch something in, it just spits out a pill. That's that's the level of care that we've been getting. It's really sad. And when I say it out loud, I'm like, is this really the world that we live in? But that would be what I would want to do at this point moving forward. Because obviously, if it's hormonal, I'm not saying that you should or shouldn't take HRT or do hormone replacement. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying like, if you're trying to figure out what's causing what and you really notice a correlation between where you're at, where you're at in your cycle and your symptoms flaring and your, or if you're at that age where you could be in perimenopause or whatever's going on, um, 
whether or not you're deciding to treat that or do something about it, let's let's try to get a, a baseline for where we're at. And at least that would give us a clearer picture because again, there is so much overlap and overlay between female hormones and neurotransmitters and what happens when people come off these drugs. And it's really scary because it can make you feel like you're floundering and you're blindly, you know, walking through this minefield because doctors, it's, it's horrifying when you realize like, they're really not much help for anything chronic. They're great in acute situations, but anything chronic, anything, um, real, they're really lacking in, in a lot of ways. And it's, it's really sad. And so I just want to validate all the women that are feeling this way, whether you've been aware that there's something potentially hormonal or whether you're like, why is this so, why do I have such a pattern every single month with my withdrawal symptoms, my waves, why is it always flaring right before I get my period or sometimes right around ovulation when I have those peaks and valleys of hormone spikes and dips. Um, it's, it's so, so, so common in this community and it's a real issue. And for myself, I don't like, it eventually got to the point where I didn't notice that my period was coming. Like I was like, because if, if I would have a flare, I would try to figure out like, where is this coming from? And, you know, can I attach it to anything, the full moon or hormones or whatever? And I would notice sim sometimes symptoms around my period. But then eventually that stopped happening where I wasn't even aware of when my period was going to come because I wasn't noticing that big spike in symptoms. So, and, and two, I want to say, and I just had a conversation with someone else about this, that whether it was coming off the citalopram or coming off the birth control or both that caused my hormones to plummet. And I was 36 years old when I, when they discovered I had no progesterone. So I have, I just kind of accepted that I would never have a child and, you know, I wasn't getting my period and I had no idea. Yeah. And so I just, I guess, trusted my body over time. And, and I tried to do things that and, and use things or not use things in my daily life that, you know, were known hormone disruptors, endocrine disruptors, whether, whether or not that made a difference, I don't know, but eventually things leveled out. You know, when I kind of got out of my own way, I originally started doing natural treatments for that low progesterone. And then I, I didn't really feel like it was helping. So I stopped and I'm like, I'm just going to get out of my own way and try to like remove things in my life that are known hormone disruptors and endocrine disruptors. And whether that was part of it or whether it, it wasn't, I don't know. But then I got pregnant naturally at 39 and a half, despite having withdrawal, despite having out of whack hormones. I don't know. It was like a freaking miracle and things leveled out. And same with when I reinstated and had a much worse withdrawal and then was spiking before my period and, and was worried about, you know, postpartum and all of those things when I got pregnant, eventually that kind of leveled out too, where I wasn't noticing, oh, my period's coming because I feel horrible. And so I think, yeah, there's different, you know, your body can, can restore its hormones sometimes and other times it needs a little bit of help and it's very individual but the more objective where we can actually see where we are at individually the better because otherwise you know we kind of could potentially fall back down into that trap of vending machine care that's what I call it so I don't know if this is helpful or not I just I just have noticed that a lot just the interplay with female hormones the more that I talk to people and women and in my own experience, especially in hindsight, seeing how hormones, it's all, it's all related. It's all tied in together. So let me know your thoughts on this and what your own experience is or has been in your withdrawal experience. I'd love to see more feedback in the comments and I know other people appreciate hearing others' experiences as well. So yeah, I hope you guys are doing okay and I'll see you next time. Bye.